In this video, we're going to prepare a, a salt, the salt copper sulfate, from the neutralization reaction between copper oxide and sulfuric acid. So copper oxide is a base, sulfuric acid is an acid, so this is, will form a salt, copper sulfate, and water. So to begin with, what we will do is measure out the volume of acid we require, which is 100 centimetres cubed. So I've got a 25 centimetre cube measuring cylinder here, so I'm going to have to use it four times, and I'm going to place it in this conical flask. Eventually, that conical flask is going to be put in a water bath, but let's get the acid sorted out first. So I'm going to take 25 centimetres cubed four times in this 25 centimetre cubed, in this 25 centimetre cubed volumetric flask. So it's one molar acid, or one mole per meter cubed acid. So it's reasonably strong, so that's why I'm wearing laboratory gloves. It's not as precise, but we're getting very close to that quantity. And it's not 100% not crucial that we have exactly 100, because in the reaction we're going to be adding more than enough copper oxide to use up all that acid. So it's just a, approximately 100 centimetres cubed. So that's 100 centimetres cubed in the acid, of the acid. So I'm just going to light the, the Bunsen on a yellow flame, like that. Okay. So then to, to warm the water up, we turn it to a sort of gentle blue flame and place it underneath the beaker. And the water's got to get to about 50 degrees, okay, or more, um, about around 50 degrees. I'm just going to leave that for a few minutes. So you can use a, obviously use a thermometer, like this one here, to measure the temperature as, as, it, as it heats. So I'll just put that in. The temperature now above 50 degrees Celsius. So the next stage is to um, turn the Bunsen off, the wall. And we're now going to place the sulfuric acid solution into the water bath. And we're going to leave that a few minutes so that the acid is at the right temperature. So now the sulfuric acid is reasonably hot, we can take that out. And to that, we're going to add the copper oxide solid. And we're going to add small portions and give it a swirl. So let me just add the copper oxide, which is a black powder, to the sulfuric acid. So reasonably small quantities. Let's start gently. I'm just going to give that a little swirl. It's the sort of bluey grey colour, but the grey colour is obviously due in part to the presence of the black copper oxide that we've added. So at this stage, we know that the copper oxide is, is, is in excess because it's no longer dissolving, and you can see that from the black coloration of the mixture. So we're going to filter off the excess copper oxide using a funnel and the filter paper. So the first thing we do is we fold the filter paper into four, like so, and then you've got to form a cone of that type, like that. Then we open one of the leaves of the cone, so it looks something like this. We place it in the funnel. To damp it down, such that the filter paper stays in place, we just add a bit of distilled water. Okay, so now the uh, funnel is sitting in place, the filter paper in the funnel is sitting in place, so all I'm going to do now is filter off the excess copper oxide by pouring it slowly into the filter funnel containing the filter paper and let that come through. And you can see a nice blue colour due to the presence of the copper sulphate that we formed in this neutralisation reaction. OK, so now you can see that we've carried out the filtration, and in the conical flask at the bottom there, we've got our blue solution, which contains the copper sulphate, and also some water. So the last stage of this process is to take the uh, conical flask and place it and pour the solution into an evaporating basin, this thing here. So what we're going to do is pour that into there and pour this into the evaporating basin, where we're going to remove some of this excess water. So I'm not saying I'm going to pour it all in just for the interest of time. So I've poured most of that solution in. And then I'm going to place it back on the water bath we used earlier. So the water bath was used to heat the copper sulfate solution until approximately 50% of the water has evaporated. We then take the heat off and allow the solution to cool. 
So once the solution and the evaporating basin have cooled down, we can pour the contents onto the watch glass and leave the solution to cool further overnight where we will see crystal formation.